Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in this episode, we see that our first asteroid encounter that's coming up will be IHY-504, and it's going to arrive in about two days and 23 hours. So we have to plan for that. However, it's a Class D, and we saw in the previous episode that Class D objects are not easy to move around. The one we were trying to move around was 600 tons. So this is going to be difficult if, uh, if in fact, it's going to crash into Kerbin. And right now we're not getting a periapsis, so we don't know for sure. Uh, we've already got some of these guys on our list, so that's all right. But let's see about these unknown objects. This one... Okay, so I'm going to jot this one down now. So we've got BJL563. And it looks like it's going to be coming in in 17 days, which looks like day 36. So, yeah, that's interesting. But let's try and find some smaller asteroids. Class C, Class C, Class C. Well, uh, the universe likes to generate Class C's, apparently. Oh, there's a Class B that's untracked. Okay. Mm, okay, this one's coming in eventually. And it has a periapsis already, so that's good. This is PWX191. And not, a, not its periapsis, we want its encounter time. And this looks like it's going to be encountering on... And I'm, I'm picking the absolute day rather than the encounter date, so that the, obviously the encounter date changes, but if I add the encounter time to the date, I know exactly when it's supposed to come in, and it looks like day 52. Oh, did I read this wrong for the other one? I think I might have. Anyway, uh, day 52, I think 8 hours? Where's my BJL? So these are the things you need to do if you want to keep your Kerbals safe. Yeah, I, uh, no, no, I, I got that right. Uh, so these are the things you need to do to keep your Kerbals safe from asteroids, if you wish to do such things. And, um, yeah, but without further ado, we have other, other issues to attend to in Kerbin's region itself, first of all. Um, first of all, let's check out which, what this AD3 is. Because you've got two AD3s, and I don't know whether one of them is... Ooh. Oh. Hmm. No, this one's gonna escape. It was pretending. It was making it look like it had an orbit, and that's may what made me wondering. But here it says it's got an escape. I guess it's just too close to call or something. Anyway, uh, there's its 600 ton mass, so... Well, I guess we'll find out in, uh, in four days whether it really manages to escape. Four days? You know what? Okay, um, so our schedule is to bring back the Minmus mission. Where's Minmus mission? Minmus mission, science junior standard. Bring back the two moon missions, and then tabulate the science, and get all that settled. But, maybe we can uh, throw something at this. Alright, I mean, because cause, we got four days. Maybe, maybe that's enough time. Let's go to the VAB and take a look. Do we really need anything more than our AD3? That's the question I have to ask myself. I mean, in this case, no, but maybe we should make some developments on this AD3 in order to handle future missions like that, uh, those other Class Ds that might be coming in. Hmm. Well, I think I might want more RCS ports. Though, so where to put them is a good question. We're gonna lose most of this, eventually. Though th this hangs out for a while, really. So maybe we can uh, stick some on here. 
That's fair enough. But really, we need to have a lot more... more stuff. So let's let's expand our capabilities here. Let's go to four-way symmetry. My, my enunciation is not good today. Symmetry. Okay, so four-way symmetry there. Hopefully the... Yeah, I think that's fine. The staging is alright. And I want to slip another tank into this stage. Hopefully the extra boosters will give us enough of a boost to keep that going. Let's see. 36, 44... Yeah, should do. Should do quite nicely. Okay, so let, let's, let's try this out uh, in an attempt to intercept that asteroid again and see how it does. I mean, it's only a minor adjustment by comparison to what we could be doing, but but I'm not unlocking any new engines, and the mainsails are top one. Uh, maybe sneaking another SAS into this would be a good idea. Did we... We only have some battery power in the probe part here. Maybe this calls for... Reaction wheels are heavy, though. But we might not be able to avoid it. Okay, so that'll give us a little bit more stability when grappling with the asteroid. We'll call this 84. And let's send it out there. Okay, it's nighttime launch, but we've got our lights. SAS is on, throttle is up. Oh, and we need to make sure we're in our, the right part of our orbit to intercept. We're not, actually. We need to time warp a bit. Where is the... Okay, it's over there. We still need to head south. Uh, unless we need to head north. Wait a minute. Uh, well, it depends on when we launch. Let's get this all lined up. More or less like that. Alright. Um, so we'll time warp a little bit, and then I guess we'll head north. Uh, once we get to this point. So it'll be sort of a dawn launch, I think. Okay, that, that should be good. Alright, without further ado, we're heading north. Let's go! Okay, separation of boosters. All good. Okay, we should be uh, looking at how our orbit is going. And let's set 83 out there as a target. Uh, we seem to be increasing our Okay, this way we'll decrease it. Alright, so we can adjust our inclination now. We seem to be at our ascending node. Very convenient. Orbit-wise, it's not very convenient, but we'll see. Approaching Apple is too quickly, I think. Yeah, yeah. Got to tilt up. This rocket has this problem at this stage. I'm 
still keeping an eye on the ascending node here. Unfortunately, we can't get a display for it. Uh, why? I mean, KSP should have a configurable display option. I mean, why not, right? You don't have to bring it up, so people who are new to the game don't have to be worried about it. But just uh, in in this display, a little a little thing where you can decide what it shows you would not be a big problem. I I wouldn't think so. Plenty of mods have added it before, like MechJab and Kerbal Engineer and others as well. So doesn't seem like a immense trick of coding. So I think they should do that. It's purely optional for the user, but I don't think it's optional for for the program itself. I think uh, the logic is that the uh, the devs just want to minimize how much they're duplicating the efforts of modders at this point since uh, they can work on more complicated parts of the game, more fundamental parts of the game while the modders take care of these little bits. But, but I think this particular feature is not one of those features that uh, w other, other things would have to work around that that would necessarily cause any issues and I think it's also something that pretty much everybody wants to see so yeah I hope they do it okay so let's plot a few things at apoapsis I'll plot my circularization such as it is and then it's only showing an ascending node, not really a descending node. I, I think that's because the other object only has part of an orbit left. Let's see now. So let's say <clears throat> let's say around here. Okay, let's say we get as close as we can from this maneuver. And how much is this maneuver? 925. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's let's do our burn to orbit first. We're still not in orbit after all. Okay, and I'll change things obviously because I didn't do that precisely, but let's get our did I action group anything? No. Well, let's get our panels out this way. Very good. Now what's the situation? I guess this isn't really a ascending or descending node, so maybe we can get as close as we can and do a mid-course plane change. That looks pretty close. Let's go mid-course, add another maneuver try and do plane change here. You can see how much easier that is. I'm literally just turning the mouse wheel one one notch at a time here. I think uh, that's going to be optimal. It's still about 32 kilometers. I think uh, all of our missions are safe. We've got one landed and two in orbit around the moon, so we don't have to worry about their condition. So let's get this one underway first. Then, then just bring the missions back, which won't take very long. I mean, uh, not, not all the way back. We'll have them launched on their way back home and see how long that takes. Okay, but uh, first of all we need to do this maneuver and we have to do it fairly accurately to make this work out. So what is this? Trans-asteroid injection? 
Is that what that is? They come up with, I mean, this translunar injection, transmars injection. So, what exactly is this? Uh, eventually, NASA's gonna have to come up with a name for this, right? Is it just trans asteroid injection? Okay, well, that's as good as I can get it. Let's see now. Ah, uh, wow. That's suddenly quite a bit off, isn't it? What happened there? Okay, things have gone wrong. Wow, hey! That's not fair. We had a pretty close even bef... What did I do wrong? Hmm... My rather... better encounter has now turned into a nearly 100 kilometer encounter. Let me try and add a maneuver here and see what happens. Well, that's already worse. Interesting, I added that maneuver and took it away and uh, my separation has changed by 90, uh, 30 kilometers there. Very disconcerting. Okay, we have... Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we have this. 24 kilometers, one day, 20 hours. I think I'll have to take that. And that's in 14 hours. Okay, I think... Let's get our Minmus mission into orbit around Minmus and our moon missions back. I think we can do such things. Okay, so let's go to the Science Junior Standard on Minmus. Okay, here we are. and Let's uh, check that we've done our science. Okay, we've, we've clearly done that. So, we can uh, get into orbit. Let's just go for a straight 90 degree launch and it looks like SAS is on, very important as we discovered last time. Okay, hold your horses. Whoa, whoa. We're ready on escape trajectory? <laughs> uh... That was quick. I've I've forgotten how how small Mimus is, is <laughs> I guess. Okay, escape trajectory, fine. Um alright. Let's just keep on going like this. This happens to have been the right time to burn for Kerbin anyway. Right when you're on this side, you can come off and do a direct burn back. Somewhere else, it wouldn't have worked out this way. Okay, that will definitely be good enough. Alright, so unexpectedly, I've got the Minmus mission headed back home. Let's take a look at, well that will be in two days and six hours, so uh, our mission to the asteroid will get the asteroid before then. Let's uh, head to our missions in orbit around the moon. Let's switch to Science Junior 2. Alright, so we'll uh, have this one come back. Let's say, well it's pretty much right where it needs to be. Let's burn out here. Actually it's not quite the best place to return from. it'll do. Okay, we better just do this, otherwise I'm going to lose my chance. Ooh. Okay, probe. This is your chance to go back. Go for it. Okay, we'll have to dump that stage. I hope that's alright. 
Sort of looks like uh, some giant bug is attacking Kerbin. Space bug. Okay. Let's see if that had the intended results. Not quite. Uh, let's get a little bit closer. Okay. That is more like it. So that one's headed back. Let's switch to Science Junior 1. I, I'm worried a little bit about our electric charge, but... Uh, huh. Why does it seem like whenever I turn the view, it starts... Oh. Okay, well anyway, it's uh, replenished. I, I guess it was just starting to get some sunlight. Let's switch to Science Junior 1. Now Science Junior 1 of course lost one of its solar panels and so you see it's it's like this now. Okay but uh, that should not hinder its progress towards its return. And it should be able to return faster than, well, a little bit faster than Science Junior 2. Okay, eight hours and four minutes to curb and periapsis. That will be a fine burn. Let's time warp to it after turning the probe. Okay. Probably good enough, but I'll do a little bit of a touch into the retrograde direction to make sure it's not too deep in this case. We're not returning from the moon. I think that's too much. We should go for just under 30 kilometers, I think we find. Uh, we're not returning from Minmus, I mean. Uh, Minmus, uh, I tend to go for around 27, but for the moon, just under 30 is fine. And that's just to guarantee a capture. If this was realism overhaul and we had all sorts of more complicated atmospheric effects, I would have much more complicated things to say about that. But let's go to Space Center and see the timing of everything. Okay, so what's our situation? 84 we need to deal with in 14 hours. Um... This little guy is coming in two days. Science Junior 2, 11, about well, 12 hours, give or take. Science Junior 1, 8 hours. So, we can get both Science Juniors in before we have to do the maneuver for 84. And then uh, 84 will not reach the asteroid, well, may or may not. But yeah, we can't really see when it reaches the asteroid. I think it might be close to when the Minmus mission returns. Okay, uh, so... I think... Uh, yep, Science Junior 1 then. Okay, it's that time. Let's reap the rewards of doing our science. Here you can see the two relatively different orbits for the two Science Juniors and the reason why there's the difference in their return time. Oh, it's a dark side again. Even with lights, I don't want to be returning on the dark side. Okay, let's orient retrograde.
Okay, well, we're definitely coming down. Soon. Probably hitting water. Okay, approaching safe speeds for parachute deployment. And parachute deployed, SAS off. Okay, water landing as expected. Let's recover this. So that was worth 132 science. Let's not uh, waste too much time. Let's get to our next moon mission on, on its return. So ironically, this one has the lights, but it's all brightly lit by the sun. I wonder where the sun was for the other one. Completely absent. But anyway, here's the situation and it's going to be hitting Kerbin in four hours. I said lights, but it's got light, really. Okay, parachute time, I think. SAS off. Okay. And the pro gets a uh, look at the moon as it makes its... Oh. Oh darn. Whoa. I think... Time warping just got me. I think... Hmm. Alright, well, I think we lost the Science Junior. <sighs> Alright, let's recover Vessel. Well, that's what I get for musing about the moon on Final Descent. Well, we lost the Science Junior. We ended up uh, only with 32 signs from that one. Well, let's let's uh, let's try and get things on a better note. Let's turn to our mission on its way to the asteroid and make sure it gets to do its planned maneuver. So, planned maneuver in two hours and thirty-seven minutes, and that's how it looks. Not bad. Let's get it there and get this thing on the right path. After our serious disappointment with, with that uh, flawed moon return. Moon sample return mission. I guess it's not really a sample return mission. It's not collecting moon rocks. It's just bringing samples to the moon and seeing whether they, whether they get stickier or not. Okay. All right. Let's turn towards that target. There it is. And remember, this is going to be a fiddly maneuver. Not easy to get this right. It really, point 0.1 difference is a huge difference in this case. And really, it's a matter of how long my burn time is. So I'm going to try and get an estimated burn of one minute. Oh no, that's... It's even at low thrust, it looks like it's just a matter of seconds. So let's hold on. We'll pretty much be able to do it instantaneously. Mm, that blue marker is dancing around too much for me to get this right. Okay, let's say that's as good as that's gonna get. Let's see what it gave me. It's not entirely sure what it's given me. Uh, 20 to 40 kilometers looks like. Somewhere in that neighborhood. 
All right, I think I will uh, end it here. I've, it's going to take a substantial amount of time to get to the asteroid encounter and make sure everything goes right. We've still got the Minmus mission on its way back, and I'll take a little bit of time to fulfill its thing. Probably it'll be back after we get to the asteroid. Uh, we'll check that out in the tracking station at the beginning of the next episode. But yeah, so mixed results this time. On the bright side, we are trying for this asteroid again. We haven't given up on it. We've got our little probe attached to it already, and we're going to have another one attached to it. And so we'll see whether we can nab this asteroid after all and bring it into orbit around Kerbin. As for the science situation, we've gotten some science. Not as much as we wanted, about 150 science. Uh, we'll see how much the Minmus mission brings back, but it should be enough to unlock something, not as much as we wanted though. So hopefully we'll get, be able to get this asteroid into orbit and then send some Kerbals out there to do a surface sample. Alright, so that's the plan. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.